Walton Hall in Warrington was built in 1836 by Gilbert Greenall, the grandson of Thomas Greenall, the brewer originally from St. Helens. I did debate whether to include Warrington in this, uh, which is historically in Lancashire, but Walton Hall being south of the Mersey most certainly is Cheshire. It served as a family home up until 1941 when the grounds were purchased by Warrington Borough Act Council to house officers during World War II. The ghosts of former residents are believed to walk the halls to this day. Uh, the most common sighting is the female apparition, believed to be Lady Daresbury, the wife of the former owner of the hall, Gilbert, Gilbert Greenhall. His her spirit is seen around the main staircases, completely unaware of any person around her. It's believed she died in the bathroom that adjoins her bedroom, and she has also been haunting her rooms. The legend states that if she doesn't like you, you're sure to have an unpleasant experience. She may even try and push you out of her room. The spirit of a little girl is also keen to make herself known to female guests in particular wanting to hold their hand to comf uh, for comfort as she wanders aimlessly looking for her mother. Again, I, I visited Walton Hall and was not aware of anything paranormal. <laughs> Tatton Park Mansion is a beautiful Grade 1 listed country house that is currently run by the National Trust. Originally Tatton Old Hall was the original manor in Tatton Park, but the much grander Tatton Park Mansion was built in 1716 to replace it. Uh, the new building is said to be haunted and visitors often report being touched by invisible hands and hearing phantom footsteps. Heavy footsteps and sinister shuffling accompanied by menacing shadowy presence are just part of the activity associated by Tatton Old Hall. Significant temperature changes have been recorded and some people have been left so frightened that they're unable to return to the building. The building is home to a powerful male entity called Tom. He's said to have been a very violent person and drank himself into an early grave. One of the most common reports of ghosts ghostly, uh, is a ghostly woman known as the Matriarch who wanders Tatton followed by a spirit of a young girl and in the spinning room visitors have recalled the sound of crying or a woman sobbing. A poltergeist is also said to enjoy moving things in the old Victorian dining room. Uh, visitors have reported the feeling of a rope being tied around their neck in the main hall. There have been reports of a dark ghostly figure in not only the house but also the gardens. I have to say I was a regular visitor to Tatton Park rather than the Hall or Old Hall and cannot report feeling anything paranormal. Cape's Thorn Hall has been standing for close to a thousand years and has more than its fair share of ghosts. Uh, there are various spirits that call Capestone Hall home, but one of the most commonly reported is an apparition of a grey lady. Another grey lady who is so common in my native Shropshire, who is spotted in the west wing of the building. There's also a group of shadowy figures seen walking down the stairs leading to the chapel. Perhaps the most frightening experience is that visitors have reported it's an experience with a disembodied arm. The story goes that one of the younger members of the Bromley family was in bed when, a banging, when there was a banging at the window. He went to check and saw the disbodied arm attempted to open the window. He froze in terror and watched as it disappeared into thin air. I used to regularly pass Capestone Hall and was completely unaware of its reputation. At Monk's Heath, a witness reported driving past an old monk Standing on the side of the road, the figure did not appear to have any feet. As the witness pulled the car over and climbed out, the monk disappeared. Uh, 
Uh, Lord Eldon in Knotsford is said to be haunted by the spirit of Sarah and Pollitt. Uh, the Leg Arms, I, I'm sure it's pronounced Leg Arms, although it might be Lee. Um, I've always said Leg, though. A 16th century pub in Knotsford has a haunted history. An aged figure has been observed on the site, puffing away at a pipe at Arley Hall. Some members from the cast and crew of BBC's Perky Blinders were reported in the press as hearing a ghostly dog which haunts the site, shot dead by a gamekeeper after killing its owner. Uh, the ghost of a woman haunts the upper floors of Quarry Bank, Bank Mill, part of the 18th century industrial heritage site, one run by the National Trust in style. The imposing Coston Mill looms on the banks of the River Bowling, on the style estate. The ghost wears Victorian-style clothing, has been frequently witnessed watching people from the window. The guides have named her Annie, but her real identity is in fact a mystery. Other haunted sites include the Apprentice House, where pauper children were lodged and schooled. Uh, two women continue to haunt the site with Builder spotting a white lady there in the 1980s. Legends has it that if one runs round a cave known locally as the Devil's Grave in Orderly Edge, uh, Widdershins three times, the Devil is, is raised. Another version says that running around it three times restores your virginity. A pastime very popular with footballers' wives and girlfriends. Several witnesses have reported a short man with a long white beard running naked in the elderly edge area. Apparently the figure was what once approached by a police officer, only to vanish in thin air. Actually, I, I ducked down a side road um, to avoid the police, you know, I, I didn't vanish, I promise you. At the bait pub on Chestergate in Macclesfield, a young spirit called Billy is believed to haunt the pub, playing with children who visit. A grey lady, believed to be the ghost of a witch, hanged in the stairwell for witchcraft and wanders nearby in the empty residential rooms. A seven foot tall shadowy figure that lurks in the dark recesses of this foreboding place. On the abandoned upper floor, Strange markings are said to appear on the walls before vanishing again without leaving a trace. The cellar is equally as spooky and the buried tunnel there once was once used as a hideout for Catholic priests. A poltergeist is said to throw objects around. Children have been seen and heard around the building. In uh, 2016, landlord Sean Hodgson and his wife said they were told by a paranormal investigation team that there are at least 14 spirits upstairs, one of whom wanted to kill them. He said, I know because he told me, he said, kill you. I've never seen him, but I hear his voice and there's really loud bangs like a truck hitting the pub when he's there. I've heard a woman screaming. We also have a small boy that plays hide and seek with our three-year-old daughter, Mia. One of my darts players saw him and scared him half to death. Stuart House is an ugly building which can be found on St Edward Street in Macclesfield. It came into use in 1974 and was not long after that the ghost of a woman was sighted. Uh, the building was built on the site of an old foundry and in a newspaper dated 1857 it was reported that the woman of the name of Margaret Hill was visiting her husband's at the foundry and became badly burnt and subsequently died of her injuries. The Grey Lady, as she later became known, was seen by various members of staff, including the caretaker, and on, one more, on more than one occasion. And in fact, BBC journalists, along with various members of the staff, took part in a seance to contact the restless spirit, without any luck. However, when the caretaker was taking part in a live radio broadcast from Manchester, in which he was discussing the haunting, upon playback of the recorded programme, ghostly laughter could be heard in the background. Another unlikely setting for a haunting would seem to be the modern tyre and exhaust centre. However, staff at QuickFit on Davenport Street in the town of Macclesfield have reported strange experiences in the cellar of the premises, 
Many staff have to go down into the cellar have said that they have felt a presence. Uh, the manager, Alan Sladen, has, has had to change a fuse down in the cellar and he's returned as a believer, having experienced something behind him and turning around found no one there. An auditor refused to go down into the cellar, as did an electrician who was fitting an alarm system. The company's regional auditor, Gordon Wright, was in the cellar one day and he felt an atmosphere which was normally warm turn decidedly cold. Upon turning around, he saw a bluish haze dematerialising. Uh, the building stands on the site of the old Royal Oak Hotel. Perhaps someone died here in the past and their presence now haunts the Quick Fit Centre. Or maybe it's something to do with the area as it once was known as Coxstool Pit Hill, named after the ducking stool which was used to force confession from those who had been accused of witchcraft. Supersnaps and Lewis Travel have two adjoining properties that at one time could be found on Mill Street in the town of Macclesfield. However, like many shops these days, they've disappeared and now a McDonald's has taken the place of where they once traded. In 1990, unexpected events started to unfold. <laughs> it started with loud, loud bangs and bumps being heard in both properties, with the results of staff refusing to up, go upstairs on their own. Also, heavy footsteps could be heard walking about the upper floor when no one was known to be there. Uh, the situation escalated when staff tried to find a way into the old cellar beneath the property, which had once been a pub. Uh, various items in the shop went missing. It's understood, however, that these ended uh, when the ghost went on holiday to Majorca. Another haunted building in Macclesfield can be found at 37 Chestergate. These offices used to be occupied by the Macclesfield Express newspaper. And many of the staff and cleaners who worked here have reported someone walking up the stairs, although no one was actually seen. And no ghost was seen, and no people that worked there were prepared to work on, on their own in the building. Chester Gate seems quite popular for those people who have passed on. Another building that's said to be haunted is Ten Chester Gate. It's said to be haunted by a man who lived on these premises sometime in the 1800s. And he lived in what was known as Miser Hall due to the fact that he was, he was careful with his money. A site has been known to have taken place in the cellar by the former occupant's maid. On the old, on the Macclesfield Canal at Bosley, a girl pointed out a figure running across a, a nearby field to her mother, saying, uh, saying, the, saying the ten-year-old word jogger. The mother looked and could see a person in black moving towards them, but as it approached, realised the jogger wore a monk's habit and no face under his hood. The figure stopped a short distance away as if paused in mid-spirit, and when the woman turned to check her daughter was okay, she had run back to the boat, the monk vanished. It's been speculated that Mary Fitton of Gorsworth was William Shakespeare's mistress, and it's been speculated that her grave is outside the back door of Big Fenton. Uh, there has in fact, uh, there is in fact what appears to be a burial ground outside the door of this house, and the area is said to be haunted by a grey lady. Mary's ghost is said to haunt Gorsworth Hall, as, as well as having been seen in Gorsworth Churchyard, and also the road leading from the pub to the Harrington Arms. And last but not least, there's been a sighting of her in Gorsworth Rectory. It's been said that on occasions the smell of incense can be smelt in one of the bedrooms of the hall, underneath the priest room, Perhaps this is connected to Mary as evidence that her spirit is still with us. A funeral procession has been reported in Lyme Park, followed by the spectre of a weeping woman draped in white. 
She's said to be Sir Peter, and I'm going to call him, sorry, Sir Piers Legg, and so I'm going to call him Legg rather than Lee, who died in 1422 from his wounds at the Battle of Agincourt. The woman is his sweetheart, Blanche, who died from her grief. Uh, Blanche may also haunt Lime Hall, as a woman in white is seen there, alongside the sound of bells. A stone at Slattersford near Reno marks the spot of a mysterious tragic death. On Christmas Eve in 17, 1735, John Turner was returning home in a snowstorm. Anxious to be with his family, he continued through the blizzard, but sadly froze to death. Uh, besides his body, though, was a woman's footprints, and no one came forward to claim the footprints as there. To this day, it's not known who's, who the mystery woman by Turner's side was. A Bolington Ingersley Vale Mill is reputedly home to the ghost of a female worker who died in a machine accident. Also in Bolington, a former occupier of a house of this house witnessed the ghost of an old lady who would stand in the corner of the kitchen. A phantom man would move around the property at night and banging could be heard, uh, heard in, and taps coming from the trees. A old number three public house in Bolington, a ghostly woman was reported here and said to, to be run said to be on the run from the police and she drowned in a flooded stream nearby. A little girl was seen by a former landlady who said the entity was dressed in blue, wore a poke bonnet and walked straight through a closed bedroom door. Shrigley Hall Hotel is a beautiful manor set in the picturesque Cheshire countryside. There's too much information about it there's not too much information about its ghosts other than a handful of reports from guests and it's not known who the spirits might be. Reports from the guests mention a spirit walking through the bathroom, unexplained noises and cold spots. Mediums have visited the, uh, the building and said it's very active, which is probably why there are regular ghost hunts in the property. Thank <music> you.